And thirdly, the planet is already suffering from resources constraints and climate change brought about by human activities. We should be do everything in our power to reduce the burden as, for the time being, we only have one planet. The second element of international cooperation for sustainable development that I mentioned is the importance of sharing knowledge and working together on core areas of development in which we have mutual interests. The largest ever Indo-German cooperation project was launched early this year. It deals with green energy corridors and looks at bridging the gap between production and consumption of renewable energies. This is no mean task as, although the wind blows in the hills, people often live in the plains, and by the same token, while the sun shines during the day, people also need light at night. In Germany, we are trying to do our bit to combat climate change by reinventing our energy policy. We are calling this the Energiewende, it's a new German world, but I think all over the world they know the new German word, Energiewende, because it's not easy to do it in, in, in a good English, it's energy transition, but I think energy transition is not as it's mean the Energiewende in Germany, and I know that everybody is looking to Germany if we are able to do this, and it's very interesting in all discussions uh, we have. That means from uh, fossil and nuclear power to renewable energy. We do not know for certain when we will achieve this goal, but this move has def definitely stimulated a healthy debate and a lot of engineering pilot projects. We invite you to come and see what we are doing so that we can exchange knowledge and share experience to our mutual benefit. We were pleased to learn that German, uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel will be awarded the prestigious Indira Gandhi Prize for Peace, Disarmament and Development. We were also delighted that when announcing the decision, the Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust refers our cooperation on the Green Energy Corridors project. Let me give another example of how Germany can also learn from India. Last month, GIZ co-organized a dialogue between the German and the Indian financial supervisors, the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority, also known as BaFin, and the Securities and Exchange Board of the India for SABI on investor protection in Mumbai. As the financial crisis has shown, in many cases, European countries have failed to protect financial con uh, customers from bad banking behavior and the lack of a code of conduct. I was very interested to see that Indian policymakers have developed tools and instruments to better protect clients. This dialogue will also help to improve the rest of Germany and other European countries. To mention another example of practical cooperation, from a different field, India is now actively exploring various ways of providing compre comprehensive social security to its unorganized workers and those living below poverty line. One major initiative is the National Health Insurance Scheme, RSBY, which I referred to earlier. Together with the World Bank, GIZ has had the privilege of being a partner in this exciting endeavor from the beginning. One very important element of the RSBY is that it is paperless and cashless and instead uses an electronic smart card. I have one. I will show it to you. So, it's very, you see, I have my own RSBY card. Uh, as RSBY only started five years ago in 2008, India has been able to use the smart card technology from the very beginning. This contributed significantly to the success of the scheme. Germany, which introduced similar health insurance schemes more than a hundred years ago, using the technologies of the day, is now learning from India how to use current technologies in the administration of such programs. 
When I was uh, visited Seattle recently, I learned that Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has expressed an interest in becoming involved with the program. That is very encouraging. Finally, let me mention one more excellent field of cooperation for innovation in the manufacturing sector. India is benefiting from the demographic dividend, but that is also a challenge. How can the country create enough jobs for all its young people? India has witnessed a huge success in the service sector, particularly in IT. But in the manufacturing sector, development remains rather disappointing. Too few jobs have been created and these are mostly unskilled and poorly paid positions. Could India benefit from some elements of our social market economy, a concept on which the systems in continental Europe are based? Many of our most interesting institutional arrangements foster cooperation between and balance the interests of different actors, especially at meso level, that is to say between the government and those at grassroots level. Let me give you a few examples. In our industrial relations, long-term competitiveness is more important than the short-term gains of either side. Our skills development system is a centuries-old, enormous public-private partnership in which the private sector holds the main stake. Our industrial clusters routinely interact and cooperate with the research and education system and a system of successful research and development institutions like the Fraunhofer Society has evolved. India cannot, will not and should not copy and paste institutional solutions from other countries, including Germany. India has a unique institutional reality and development path, but it can pick elements of other countries' systems and adapt them to the unique Indian environment of sustainable development, technology, institutional arrangements, learning cultures and cooperating system, cooperation systems. And as the example on financial sector dialogue shows, Germany also benefits from Indian experiences and solutions. I could carry on citing opportunities for cooperation until midnight, but I will restrict myself to one final example. On behalf of the German Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology, we are now opening our, up opportunities for talented and skilled Indians who might be interested in coming to work in Germany for a while or perhaps for longer. The program is called Make it in Germany and it aims to turn India's demographic dividend into a win-win situation. We believe that India has good policies and we know that government has made plenty of funds available, but that implementation is not always smooth and institutional capabilities may be weak. We are therefore focusing on supporting our partners in implementing some of the important missions for inclusive and sustainable growth. The common denominator of all our in interventions is human capacity development. This also applies to the many German institutions which, which work together with their Indian counterparts within the scope of our projects. As a concluding remark, I would like to quote Chancellor Merkel. At the press conference following the German-Indian government consultations in Berlin on, on uh, 11 April this year, she said, I quote, we have undergone a significant transformation in the field of development cooperation, which also reflects the transformation of India from a less developed country to an emerging country with large economic dynamics. I hope that I have been able to shed some light on what this transformation means in practical terms. Let me finish by saying again how much I am enjoying my stay in India. I'm also very pleased that Instead of facing out bilateral cooperation, we are talking it to a new level. I would also like to thank iCreer again for hosting this event tonight, and I wish all of you the greatest success in your future projects and looking forward to a good discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, nice.
Your Honor, I think that was excellent that you have uh, outlined a number of areas, I think a wide range of areas where there could be, uh, there could be a lot of mutual benefit. Uh, may I now throw open uh, the floor to the audience, please, for questions, comments. Could you please identify yourself before you ask the question or, or your comment? Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Sudhir Deva. I'm an independent uh, consultant. Uh, I, would, uh, I have seen the uh, historically a lot of presence of German companies and, uh, in India. Uh, my question more is uh, in context of GIZ uh, being able to organize the investors and investment to India. We, we'll take a couple of uh, more questions. Yes, please. Yeah. Well, I think it'll take time for people to warm up, so you might. Uh, yeah. So this question I could hand over to the colleague from the KFW, because uh, um, um, I, I think he can tell much more about investments and bringing investments to Germany, because he has the the huge financial possibilities. Maybe, I'm not sure, you will say some word to this question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now he asks clearly something I can't answer as well as you can answer. Because I, I will say to you, GIZ is not bringing investors and not bringing investments um, uh, to, uh, to India. There are some um, some uh, opportunities um, of financing special projects by uh, the KFW uh, for the development, um, uh, but it's not our main uh, issue and main task to uh, to bring investors uh, here to India. Okay, so I'm, I'm Peter Hilligus. I'm uh, the country director here in uh, India from KFW, heading the local office. So it's a surprise opportunity to say something. So. <laughs> yes, excellently. Um, actually, I, I was uh, pondering a question myself about this two-way traffic between the two countries. Yeah? Since you were um, coming up with all these uh, ideas about how can Germany benefit from Indian experience, from Indian expertise, but also maybe from Indian investors coming to Germany. And it's pretty interesting to see that over the last 10 years, we've seen more and more foreign direct investment from India coming to Germany, which is something which was really not existing before. And so it truly, also in the investment sphere, is, is a two-way traffic, although I would believe maybe the instruments of Germany to promote German investors coming to India uh, a little bit more elaborated than the other way around. So I, I have not seen any Indian institution that was really actively bringing Indian investors to Germany. There are these delegations coming from India to Germany, but they are always only asking for Germans to come back to, to the subcontinent, so to invest here. Anyway, there is a lot of, um, I would see, benefit also to Germany coming from such investments, yeah, Indian companies producing even in Germany, yeah, using German technology, so there's a lot of technology transfer happening within Indian companies, within German companies and subsidiaries, which I find quite interesting. The other, the question I was having in mind was, okay, since we're talking about GIZ and bilateral cooperation, and there are, I just looked at the brochure, roughly 250 GIZ people here in India working um, in programs and projects. Is there anything, has ever anyone thought about having Indian experts coming to Germany to advise German institutions or to, work on strategies for Germany in terms of, I don't know, population management, for example. So there are many things one could think about if you want, really want to make it a, a true eye-to-eye -eye bilateral cooperation. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Tushar Pandey. I'm representing Yes Bank, which is India's fourth largest uh, private sector bank. My question is in relation to the <clears throat> comment you made on the manufacturing uh, you know, potential which probably India has. Uh, <clears throat> in the ambit of bilateral cooperation, do you see uh, a specific opportunity of uh, 
uh, German engineering which is well known worldwide, uh, some sort of that uh, manufacturing hub getting transferred <coughs> in India for let's say the in-house consumption within India and therefore that kick starting a lot of uh, let me say, I will not call it you know low technology but low cost relatively so that that spurs uh, some kind of uh, and I am talking specifically in terms of what can bilateral cooperation in that area do uh, within the ambit of uh, you know Indian economy growing in that side. Other questions? Oh, to while. About how Germany can benefit from Indians going to Germany, if at all. Yes, maybe I will give a few remarks. On one hand, I told about the project um, Make It in Germany. And I think it the, the, it is apart the first time we we tried try to bring Indians to Germany not only that they work there but also that we can learn from them uh, in in a huge uh, field especially I think we do it in the mint that means uh, mathematics uh, IT um, natural science so there are a lot uh, uh, of, um, of of opportunities uh, to exchange the views and to come um, uh, eye to eye and to discuss about this and bring the Indians experts to Germany. So I think it's the start and the beginning uh, of something uh, like working together. Uh, on the other hand, um, I'm sure that a lot of uh, research institutes um, um, have a broad exchange between each other. Indian experts uh, also as German experts, as he mentioned, there are two experts from iCorea now in Germany uh, to discuss. I think it shows that there is an exchange and it's no problem. So, but it started step by step now, and um, it shows that the that the uh, way for the new international cooperation is the right way and is starting yet uh, now. For the question, if bilateral cooperation in the field of manufacturing, I'm not sure if it's the right way to bring manufacturing to India. I think it's the right thing to discuss about the systemic approach. Only if you discuss about the systemic approach, what is what strengthens uh, all questions of um, of investments in um, in manufacturing. And um, um, so, um, uh, give work to the people. You need the systemic approach, thinking about how um, 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 economic is functioning, uh, what are the skills. Um, because you, if 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 some some uh, companies from from Germany maybe will come to India, they also need skills. Uh, workers, and so it's the first step to have skilled worker. And on the other hand, um, 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 we have German companies, especially I saw uh, one, two, three in uh, in Bangalore, um, uh, which have a lot of, of skilled workers and also work with Indians. But I think it's the systemic approach to to know that you need. Uh, also manufacturing on your own, it, not only from Western companies, but new companies in India, and they need um, uh, an, a, 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 a circumstance to work in this circumstance. And so it's the systemic approach you need. And I think this is the discussion you have to do in, in, in bilateral cooperation, but it is something we uh, work together for a long history uh, with India in this case of sustainable um, uh, economic uh, development. Other questions? Well, le yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah I was uh, reading the sentence behind you, bilateral cooperation for sustainable development. And one, one issue that always comes up is whether India and Germany have the same understanding of what is written there. So sustainable development, I mean, it's a quite broad term.